And then the second pair, you have a sphere and a mirror. And so somehow the sphere is like uh, somehow dominating, but the mirror is uh, revealing something to the people about themselves. And then in your fourth, the third pair of white hands, you have a danda, which is a symbol of royal authority, and a chain, uh, you know, some kind of like you know, holding someone in some focus. And then finally, the final pair, you have an axe in the right and a four-faced head of Brahma by the hair in the left. And um, you're standing on your right leg is standing on Kama, Cupid, uh, sort of which is a symbol also of lust, and of Rudra, which is a symbol of the destructive, fierce anger energy, divine fierce anger energy. And you're standing, you're, you're standing very lightly on them with the two legs in a very triumphant kind of feeling that you have. And you are Kala Chakra, and in a way you are Vishwamata, if you like that, or, or she is, uh, you're someone else, you know, the great seal or whatever, you know, whichever way you want to do it. There's different ways of doing it, depending on what stage you're on. But the point is you feel magnificent. You feel very, very confident and and very determined in your assuming of responsibility for the fate of beings. And to make sure that bliss is manifest in all directions. And, and, and in that you're highly aided by Vishwamata, the universal mother, although I also think it might also be called the multifarious mother. You know, there's many forms that she has. You know. Multifarious might be even better for Vishva than universal. <clears throat> and then in your chakras, of course, you have, a, and in her chakras, you have this Oma Hum Ho Hang Sha, you know, Om at the brow level in the back of the brain in the center channel, Ah in the throat level back in the central channel, Hung in the heart chakra back in the central channel, Hum. Ho in the navel chakra, back in the central channel. Hum, the crown chakra above your head, at the very top of your head. And Ksha at the genital chakra. And that's your inner subtle thing. And then there's generally Om Ah uh, Hum. You know, the Om Ah Hum really are body, speech, and mind of all Buddhas. And the Ho is the intuition of all Buddhas. And the Hum Ksha is the sort of your individual bliss thing from end to end of your central channel. And, and of hers, you know. And hers and yours are kind of entwined, the two central channels, because of your, the union of your sexual organs. And, um, but neither one is emitting anything. It's an undissipating bliss. It's like pure, it's not like reaching a peak and then dissipating. In other words, it's at total peak. And, and the peak is feeding back up through all the chakras in both bodies. Okay? So that's, that's what you want to meditate. And then gradually, bit by, you memorize that so you can really feel all of it. And then gradually, you, each of the 24 implements in the hands are all symbolic of specific samadhis, specific understandings, specific activities. And you sort of learn what that means, you know. And you can emphasize any one of them, you know like the chakra, the wheel. The wheel can be the dharma wheel of teaching, and then it can also be the discus. And with the discus, it shoots around everywhere in the universe, and it helps all beings cut away their personality, self-narcissistic, self-obsession, and self-preoccupation. And with the, with the weapon of emptiness, you know, that was seen like as a weapon of introducing them to clear light, you know of selflessness, something like that. I mean, you can do all kinds of things once you have a feeling of being in that embodiment and completely apart from your habitual, ordinary embodiment. That's the key. Both in the internal, what's called the divine identity, the Buddha identity, Kala Chakra identity, and also the Kala Chakra form and body. 
which then resonates out to be all the other day. Then your eight wins, your ten wins. Vishwamata is also you, but also she is two of the most important of your ten wins. The prajna and the jnana one of the shaktis. And then the other eight are, your three of them are major and four, five of them are minor wins. The minor wins are the wins that go to the, from the heart chakra to the five senses. One of the senses being the skin, the whole skin. So it's a, it spreads hugely through a network of nerves, <coughs> of channels. And so this is the goal. You know, then, then when you, then, then, so you have around you in this penthouse, beautiful, secure, exquisite, with every jewel pillars and everything, this penthouse, above the mind mandala where there are the eight black onyx pillars, I mean the 16 onyx pillars, you know, four in each direction, and each pillar has a symbol of the direction, it has a, it has a sword on the front, on the eastern ones in front. It has a um, uh, lotus in the northern one, white lotus. It has a red jewel in the southern ones, the four, there adorning the pillars. And it has a red, yellow, a golden wheel on the western one in that space below you. As you look and you look around and look down with all four faces at the deities in, the, in those. Uh, and you sort of see past the consort, you can see the ones in the east in front of you. But you, of course, more interested in looking at her with your front face. But you can also see behind. So you see the, all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, male and female, in the mind mandala palace. And the mind mandala palace only has a threefold wall with black, with white, red, and black. The inner is black. So now we'll do that. We'll get a sense of what that is populated by. That's where we are. Okay, you meditate. Did you meditate that? Did you get a feeling of that? See, that's what I want you to have is the feeling of you with it, because you are the Shaktis too. They are also you, but they also bring something to you. So it's like a different facet of yourself, and yet it's someone else, and everything is someone else. But you are one with all those someone else's. You just enjoy the difference, actually. Vive la différence, you know, as they say. So then I, as primal being, so then we, we read that part. And you draw all the Buddhas, the Akshobhya, Ratnasambhava, Vairochana, Amitabha, and Amogasiddhi, and all their retinues in their divine forms come. And then they, they actually are your own whole body, ordinary. Or they were what, what you had previously perceived as your own body-mind processes. And now they're all deities. And they again come and they merge into you. And then they radiate outward from you. And they merge with the body of Vishwamata, which could be you, too, as the female side of this union. And then it radiates out from her and comes back again into your crown in the form of the mandala assembly, merging with the white moon spirit of enlightenment, which melts down the central channel from the fire of the great passion coming from the ovum, red spirit of enlightenment from the, from the mother, and streams down the central nerve channel. And then from the Vajras, the phallus, the, va the phallic Vajras channel, it falls into the mother's lotus. And then that drop, and the single drop that goes there, which is not a normal emission, it just is it's connected there to her ovum, and in the meeting point of the two channels. And then it transforms into the seeds of all the deities at first of Akshobhya, and they become the symbol of these deities, and their hand formed to, to transform into the actual deities, which one by one emerge from the mother's lotus, and each take his or her own seat, and akshobhya, etc. in other words. Then the A and the Vajra create a green akshobhya, faces green, red, and white. Six arms, you can read it together if you like, or you can just listen, it's okay, because you're trying to meditate. 
Uh, six arms, right, Vajra, chopper, axe. Left, bell, kapala, brahma, head. And notice usually that Vajra and bell always go together in right and left. Chopper and kapala, that's the skull bowl, always go together. And axe and brahma, head tend to always go together in the two, two hands, in this case of Akshobhya. And um, uh, so Bel Kapala Brahma, you can't possibly remember this right away. That's why you have to keep repeating it many times until you sort of see Akshobhya that way. He's green, front face green, right face red, left face white in his case. And then A and Avajra also create, I think, long A. And a Vajra create green Vajra Datishvari, green, red, and white faces, same looking like, like Akshobhya. Vajra Chopper Axe, Bell's left Kapala Brahma head, same. Embraced by Vajra Sattva. So he's in a blue with a, emanated with it, they don't mention, but Pradnya Paramita, which is one of the Shaktis, he embraces. And um, she's blue. And the green Vajradatishvara embraces also a blue Vajrasattva. And they emanate from Mother's Lotus and divide indivisibly from Vishwamata. They both merge with Vishwamata. And again, then you have a Vajrasattva embraced by Vajradatishvari and merges with myself. And Prajnaparamita embraced by Akshobhya merges with Vishwamata. So, you both are three people, or you know, you're, you're multiple people, okay? Then now you begin to populate the mind mandala. So you have e, e, and I'm sorry I didn't have diacriticals in those days. My typewriter didn't do diacriticals. I have to now edit them in. <laughs> but when you see two E's together like that, it means long, one is short and one is long. So E, e and swords which are always the symbol of the Amoga City clan or family, create a black Amoga City and a black Tara. And their faces are black, red, and white. They have six arms holding sword, chopper, and trident in the right, and a shield and a skull bowl, always with the chopper, and a white kanvanga, always matching the trident in the left. And they emanate from the mothers for Vishwamata's lotus, and they are respectively embraced by Lochana and by Rochana. And the Lochana, who is the female Buddha in the Vairochana clan or family, she's yellow, and Vairochana is yellow. So you have a black a male Buddha embraced by a yellow female Buddha, and you have a black female uh, Bodhisattva Buddha embraced by a smaller male Vairochana. So Vairochana there takes a smaller form. And she's the dominant partner of the couple. And she's black and he's yellow. And Amoga City is black and Lochana is yellow. And these are in front of you, in the east and southeast. Amoga City, in union with Lochana, is in the east. And you can see them over, looking over kind of your Vishwamata, who's in front of you. And um, looking down, because you're in this penthouse sort of thing. And then. Um, Southeast, you have Tara, a big black Tara with a small little uh, Vairochana embraced who is in her lap, kind of, you know, but in union. They're all in union. And that's the Sugata platform. That means the Bliss Buddha platform. Then Ur, -ur which is here a vowel, Ur, and jewels, which is the symbol of Ratna Sambhava, create red Ratna Sambhava and white Pandarava, red Pandaravasini. Uh, who is usually the consort of Amitabha, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So they're both red, and they look the same and have the same things in the hands. I won't read it. You can't really remember it all. But basically, a red Buddha and a red male Buddha, red female Buddha, who are in the, he's in the south, and she's in the southwest corner and of the mind mandala. And Mamaki, who is white, embraces him, and Amitabha, who is a little Amitabha, who is white, embraces her. And they're in the south and southwest. And so you see them from your red passionate face, looking down to your right, which is the south. And they emanate from the lotus and take their seats there. 
once they've come out of the, they come in through you, of course, and into the womb of the mother, then they're born from her, and then they go out there. Then U'u and lotuses create Amitabha and Mamaki, who are white in the north on your left side. And he's a big Amitabha, and she's a big Mamaki. And they are white and so forth. They have faces like that. We don't have to worry about them. And uh, they are embraced by a little Pandaravatsini, who's red, and a little Radnasambhava, who is red, who's in the corner with her, and Pandaravatsini is in the northern direction with, uh, with the white Amitabha. And that's very unusual to make Amitabha white. He's usually always red in other mandalas. So you look down with your left white face, and you see them very peaceful in the north. Then uh, uh, the vowel of u, uh, 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 and wheel, it's a symbol always of Vairochana, wheel, create the yellow Vairochana and Lochana, who is the big Vairochana, big yellow Vairochana, golden Vairochana, golden Lochana. He's in the west and she's in the northwest. And yellow, white, black, etc. you can see how it's in the, like that. And they are embraced by a little black Tara, he's embraced by her, and a little Lamogasiddhi. So you have these multicolored couples, eight of them. And of the eight, the, they are each duplicated. And each have two forms of the male and female Buddha deities. Each Buddha has three eyes per face. The Lord sit Vajrasana, embraced by ladies in Padmasana. The, the ladies sit in Padmasana, embraced by the lords in Vajrasana. Each side of the Sugata platform has sections to right and left of the Buddha, who's in a particular direction, right? And because there are four pillars, right? So these between the two middle pillars, then between the middle pillar on the pillar on this side and the middle pillar on the pillar on this side, there are these sections. That's what it means. And in the east from he he, that's in front of you in the black, there are two big vases of purified marrow. In the south from her, her, there's two vases of, of purified blood. To the north of hu, hu, two vases of purified urine. And to the west, hu, hu, vases of purified shit, excrement. Above and, be- and above and below, hum, ha, are vases of purified semen and sweat. And it should be uterine blood, really. It should be ovum, but they, I think, really. I'm into the anti-male chauvinist. But anyway, they say sweat. All rest on lotus mats and have lotuses adorning their necks. So this is the population of the mind mandala, the inner part of the mind mandala, on what is called the sugata platform, the, between the pillars. And then the yam and the sword, then you do the beings in the doors, the fierce Buddhas in the doors. These are So yam and sword create a black big nantaka. La and wheel... Uh, create a, a yellow stambini. And uh, she embraces him. He emanates from Vishwamata's lotus and takes position at the eastern door. So you have Vignantaka. Vignantaka always goes with, the, he's always in the family of Amoga Siddhi. Antaka means terminator of Vigna. Vigna means obstructor. And stambini means petrifier. But she's female, fierce deity, and she's in union with Vignantaka. Then Ram and Jewel create red pradnyantaka, terminator of wisdom some, or intelligence, and he's uh, and white manini, and they are in the southern door. And Ram and Lotus, white padmantaka, oh, they're very ferocious. They have demonic faces. They're really fierce, but they're Buddhas, actually. Then you have a white padmantaka in the north, and he's with a red stopini. And um, in the northern door, and then a yellow Yamantaka, who's usually in the eastern door here, Yamantaka is in the northern door, who's yellow color, and he's embraced by a black Ativiria. And then at the above your penthouse, sort of in the attic, Ham and Vajra create green Ushnisi, meaning one who possesses the crown dome, embracing Atinila, who is blue. So green Ushnisi and blue Atinila there above. And um, they don't have anybody below right, right away because this is a penthouse and there's all kind of buildings underneath. So these are the five fierce couples who guard the mind mandala. 
And uh, all the terrific father mothers have reddish yellow hair, that's a flaming hair actually, standing on end, are adorned by snake and seal ornaments. Uh, they, instead of bracelets, the fierce deities have nagas, snakes, around their wrists and arms and ankles and thighs. And, the, and earrings uh, made of snakes and so forth, living, uh, living snakes, the manifestations of naga kings. And um, the fathers have right leg extended, embraced by mothers with left leg extended. Then you have a bunch of bodhisattvas. And, um, and these are in a, a row sort of by the wall of the mind mandala, a little bit behind the pillar row where the, where the um, Buddhas, male and female Buddhas are, the eight couples of male and female Buddhas. And here you have AI and swords create black Akasha Garba and Sparsha Vajra. She's a female. Sparsha Vajra means the diamond of texture, of touch, the sense of touch. And Akasha Garba means the essence of space. And they are bigger, and they are embraced by Ganda Vajra, the essence of space embraced by a, a um, female Vajra of scent, and a, a male, a small male, Nivarana Viskambi. And they are in the, um, right to the right of the eastern door and in the southeast corner, behind uh, Tara, who is in the southeast corner. And they're also black and yellow. Ganda Vajra and Nivarana Viskambi are also yellow. They don't mention their colors, but they are yellow. So that's a black and yellow bodhisattva couple. And Akasha Garba is associated with the, scent of, the sense of scent. It's a de deification of the sense of smell. And Ganda Vajra is the deification of the scent, the thing what you smell, you know, the, the perfumes that you smell. And Sparsha Vajra is a deification of texture. And Nivarana Viskambi is the deity of the sense of touch, which is the whole skin. And they're in the south, they're in the east and southeast corner. Then, then you have a red Chitigarbha and a red Rasavajra in the south and southwest. Or red, white, black, you can't really remember all that, but they're like red, beautiful bodhisattvas. And they're embracing a white Rupa Vajra and a white Lokeshvara, that's Avalokiteshvara, small ones. And the, that is Shitigarbha and Rupa Vajra. Shitigarbha is the deification a bodhisattva, a bodhisattva vacation of the sense of sight, and Rupa Vajra is the deification of the visual object, and Rasa Vajra is the deification of the taste object, and Lokeshvara is the deification of the tongue sense that tastes. And they are in the south and southeast corner. And then next you have Lokeshvara and Rupa Vajra in the north, the same deities that were the little partners in the southern unions of those two. Now the same deities are the northern ones, but now the Lokeshvara is the big one, and Rupa Vajra are big, and the two consorts who come with them, Nivarana Viskambin and Ganda Vajra, are little. I'm sorry, Rasa Vajra and Shetigarbha are little. So again, it's a duplication of the couple, changing who is the dominant partner in the couple. And they're in the northern door and northeast corner. Then you move to the west, the yellow one. Always you go in a zigzag pattern uh, in the Kala Chakra. You always work, you don't just go round, you go in a zigzag pattern. And the Al Al create yellow Nivana Viskambin and Gandavadra. Remember, they were the little partners in the east, united with the two big black um, uh, uh, ones who were uh, uh, Sparsha Vajra and, uh, and uh, Akasha Garba, right? So now they are in the west and the northwest, and they are embraced again by the same Sparsha Vajra and Akasha Garba, but this time those two are the little ones, the two subordinate partners, in size, that is, you know, in the, and in posture, in their union. They're all in union, but they're in union and posture. So that completes a set of eight of them, eight couples, and then there's a little bit more with the bodhisattvas because there's more senses. So then you have a green Vajrapani and a Dharma Datta Ishvari, the goddess of the realm of reality. And Vajrapani is the sense of hearing, actually. And the Dharma Datta Ishvari, the realm of Dharma, of things, of uh, reality, she is an um, object of the mental thing. So the mental sense, you know. 
So then they are embraced by Shabda Vajra. Vajrapani is embraced by a, I think, a blue Shabda Vajra, and Dhammadatishra is embraced by a blue Samantha Vajra, the all good Bodhisattva, and who are the subordinate partners. And they are in the to the left of the south and the west doors. So you're sort of going backwards now. So to the left of the southern door and to the left of the western door are these couples. And uh, Shabda Vajra and Vajrapani is so Vajrapani is the deification or the bodhisattvification of the sense of hearing, and Shabda Vajra is the deification of sound. And Samantha Bhadra and Dharmadadishra is the deification of the mental objects in the mind, and Samantha Bhadra of the is the deification of the mental sense. And and then the, then these are reproduced in the eastern and to the left of the eastern and northern doors to make um, re- duplicate those couple, same couple, but there with the Samantha Bhadra and Shabda Bhadra as the dominant one, etc., in the same way. So all the Bodhisattvas sit, so it's a very colorful community, in other words. And you should be trying, I hope you're trying to visualize it. You don't really need to make notes because it's written here. But you are visualizing this. So you're looking down at all of these, you know, you're up in your penthouse with Vishwamata, and around you, very close into you, are these eight shaktis who are just looking adoringly at you, and they're your sort of waiting, uh, maids in waiting or something. And they are supporting your union and your bliss with you and Vishwamata. You know, they're supporting you. And they're your winds, actually, in some way, but they are deifies. And then you look out and you have all these Buddhas. You have these eight Buddhas, male and female Buddhas, in, reduplicated in two sets of couples, each one. And then you have, again, the five different uh, bodhisattvas, male and female bodhisattvas, or six, rather, male and female, so 12, I think, total. And they are in an outer row beyond the black pillars. And then you have big vases of these uh, substances, which were originally impure substances, but have uh, become pure substances, in, the, in between the pillars. And you look at this quite populated mind mandala, and that's all you need to look at, actually, if you do the retreat with the, just the mind mandala short form. We're still right, quite long, but relatively short form. And, um, and, the, and you don't want to do this in your daily sadhana at all. You don't have time. You might occasionally run through it kind of in your mind. But you, what, you, what I wanted you to feel is in this mind mandala there, you're there with all these beings. And these beings are yourself. But they're yourself as various kinds of divine functions. You know, your sight, your hearing, your everything, you know, and your different aggregates, the four Buddhas, you know, and four male and female Buddhas are your different aggregates, you know, whereas you, you, your central one, are the consciousness aggregate, you know, and the mental object among the Buddhas. And then your sense organs, the six organs, and the six sense objects are all of those bodhisattvas around the outer part, but on the inner wall of the of the mind mandala building. So... So you sort of are experimenting there with the, you're imitating, let's say, the Buddha experience where you're kind of yourself as a bliss node, an emanator of bliss node, but you also are all these other beings and you're sort of looking out through everybody's eyes in every direction. You're, so you're everyone and yet each one is itself, something, something like that. So it, 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 uh, it's really quite marvelous, actually. And it's particularly, I love it, because of the multicoloredness of each of the couples. You know, blue and green seem to like to fit together nicely. White and red seem to fit together nicely. And black and yellow seem to fit together too much. They don't seem to mix them in other ways. Right, you know, those are the, the mixes. Okay. So I just wanted to give you that feeling of this magnificent place with all these Buddhas that you're with there. Then the speech and body are really lengthy, and I didn't type it here. We can look at it maybe tomorrow if you want to get a sense of the two bigger buildings as you move outward. And it's nice to know sort of who's there. So now, you're the, but now we're at least in the mind mandala, and we know there are these other two buildings with, filled with more deities. And now you are... Um, you're doing another phase of the mandala triumph. 
So you're consecrating, you're initiating all beings, actually. So let's read this together now. This you might want to do. So I am myself, read it, let's go to it. I am myself, the Lord Kala Chakra, made of the five wisdoms, crowned by Vajrasattva, my heart being extremely pure realm of absolute reality. Light rays radiate from my heart and drag all living beings into the mandala. The transcendent father mothers are invited by these heart light rays and merge in my heart. The fire of the great passion of myself as father, mother, in union melt those transcendent lords and ladies into spirit of pure spirit of enlightenment. And that spirit of enlightenment emanates from my Vajra path and consecrates all beings. By the mere touch of the light rays from that enlightenment spirit, the living beings become filled with the bliss of supreme ecstasy and gain the nature of wisdom and the technique as they various face, faces and colors. There are five aggregates of all beings, and now you imagine vast hosts of living beings all around your palace, and you're sort of reaching out from your starship enterprise Kalachakra palace into sort of all worlds. And all the beings in those worlds, there are five aggregates. There are material bodies, there are sensational bodies, there are conceptual bodies, there are emotional bodies, and there are consciousness, bo consciousness mind bodies, mind heaps from the syllables kshā, kshī, kshūr, kshū, kshūl, become the five transcendent lords. That's akshobhya, vairochana, akshobhya, mogasiddhi, sambhava, amitabha, and vairochana. And the five elements from kshā, kshī, kshūr, kshū, kshūl become the five transcendent ladies. And that's tāra, mamaki, uh, uh, I'm sorry, tāra, pandāra, vāsini, Mamaki and Lotana and Dharmadatta Ishvari. And the six inner sense media, that's your six senses, visual from Kha, Kshe, Kha, Kshu, Kshal, Kham, become the six spiritual heroes. So these syllables go out and they transform all the beings. It's like a flood of these syllables. And six spiritual heroes. And then the six objective sense media from Kha, Kshe, Kshu, Kshal, Kshal, Kha, become the six spiritual heroines. Which are the uh, which and then the five action faculties from Kha, Kshya, Kshra, Kshwa, Kshla become the five fierce deities. The action faculties are like your mouth, your nostrils, your urethra, your anus. I forgot what the other one is, but that's what they are. And in this way, they transform into the nature of the circle of the mandala of the 32 auspicious signs. They then proceed each to her or his own Buddha land. So here now, basically, what you do in this m building, this palace, this jewel palace that you're in, and you're in the body that you're in, which is made of pure light, you have no viscera. You, know, you don't have kidneys and stomach and bladders and lungs and heart, etc. You're just pure energy, pure light, of a different color. And all the other deities there are also, the Buddha deities are pure light. And the building, in a way, is also transparent and pure light. And then you, these the syllables, these, all these ksh connected with the consonant ksh, which is a very, the ksh consonant, like oma, hum, 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 ksha. The ksha one is connected to the genital center, you know. So a lot of powerful activity and creative activity comes from that, both for male and female. And so those syllables, like, stream outward, and they go into all the components of the living beings including animals and beings in hell and deities and everyone. And they turn them into also deity, Kalachakra deity forms. And, um, and in a way, they bring them, and they do so bringing them into the mandala, and then they, then they are sent, they're transformed into deities. They're transformed into Kalachakras, and then they stream back out, and they go back to their own palaces in their own Buddha lands. So you sort of visualize them all coming to perfect Kala Chakrahood, all the beings. And that's the, 
and then you lock in extremely pure pride. Om, say Om, Suvishuddha Dharma Dhatu, super pure, Suvishuddha means super pure, super purified, the realm of reality. Swabhava, Atma Koham, I have the nature of the super purified, should be a V there, Swabhava, Atma Koham, the super purified reality realm. So there's no, this is sort of the, the mandala triumph means you're seeing the whole universe as mandala, all the beings as Buddhas, and you're sort of in that moment of where your fulfillment and their fulfillment is the same, you're visualizing that, which happens to a Buddha. And it's why a Buddha can become a Buddha and dwell in the non-dual samsara and nirvana without abandoning the beings, because they see the beings, time is collapsed into a giant infinite present moment and that awareness, and everyone is already a Buddha. And here you're just rehearsing what it might feel like, actually. So there's nothing more to be done. It's like because you're sort of at the level of clear light, and yet the aspect of the clear light is all this fantastic mandala, which itself is relative. It's not an absolute, but it's manifest like that. And so you, you are rehearsing your own Buddhahood in a way. You're visualizing your own Buddhahood. Okay? Any question? Do you have a little feeling of being in a busy house? You're in a discotheque with a lot of Buddhas of multicolors dancing around. Everyone's in sexual union. But it's this indissipated sexual union that is like a Reikian, simply they're dyads. And they're balancing each other. And it isn't like rushing to a climax, like trying to get something out of it. They're already at the total climax, all the way up, all and down, all of their chakras, because they're all Buddhas. So they are like swept away in the blue light that Wilhelm Reich like, saw as true, what he called true orgasmic potency. That guy was definitely a former reincarnation of some former Talachakra practicing monk. There's no doubt about it. How do you ever think of such things? It really was great. And, uh, okay, any question about all of that? Now, you're going to, when you're going to, when you do your short thing, you're just, I'm a Kala Chakra, and, you know, then all my senses and this and everything I see is like a union. So when you see something, Kshitigarbha, the essence of earth, the womb of earth, his name Shitigarbha, he is in union. He's making love with Rupa Vajra. The Vajra, the clear light in the form of visual object. So when you see something, it's ecstatic in the sense of it's this union, this undissipated, peak climax, sustained climax, eternal, infinite, sustained climax union of your vision, visual sight, is the Bodhisattva. The two Bodhisattvas, male and female, are in this union. When you hear something, Vajrapani is in union with Shabda Vajra. When you smell something, Akasha Garbha, the essence of space, of sky, is in union with Gandha Vajra, scent of Vajra. When you taste something, Avalokiteshvara, tongue sense, is in union with Rasa Vajra, the diamond of taste. And when you think something, Samanta Vajra, is in union with, or when you touch something, uh, your Sarva Nivarana Viskambin is in all everywhere in the surface of your skin of every aspect of your skin, wherever there's sensitivity, is in touch with sparsha vajra, texture vajra, the, the, the clear light of clear light of the vajra, indomitable energy, strong force energy, uh, in the form of a texture, exquisite texture. And so this, it, so sensory experience becomes, becomes this kind of peak lovemaking. Uh, without any kind of like bothersomeness about it. Undissipated, anakshara, undissolving, okay? And uh, then your mind, when you think of any object, your mind sense is Samantha Bhadra connecting with Dharma Dattu Vajrishvari, you know, the Vajra, the goddess of the Vajra, the clear light in the form of a mental object realm. Something like that. Okay, question. Any questions? Anything left out? Is there a seventh sense? <laughs>
<laughs> I think that's the whole thing. Yes, I have and, a question. And, you know, when you, so, so you just do a short thing. Oh, I'm Kala Chakra, you know, and then this is, here's the palace, and we're all there with all the Buddhas, and then we invite in all the beings, and we transform them into the same as us. It isn't like we're going to lord it over them. We transform them into us. We send them back out into their own, own mandala, where they invite all beings. It's like an infinite wave that goes out. You know? And that's what Buddhahood feels like. We have a question. Yes, question. Where is that? Um, yes. So, uh, let, when, um, Kala, when we imagine ourselves as a Kala Chakra, with Vishramata in union, right? Yeah. And then, um, then there is like um, like a baby Buddha, right? There's a what? Like a baby Buddha. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't hear the word. Then yeah. we should uh, imagine then there is that we born uh, as a Buddha between. Uh, you imagine and that you are Buddha. He's asking if there's a baby Buddha, but the bodhicitta. No, no, no. No, when no Vishw babies. Kala Chakra and, and no. Vishwamata together, no? No, no, they're not. Well, all of the, in a way, all of the Buddhas come through and are produced out of their seed and their symbol. And so, in a sense, the whole universe is the baby, yeah, in a way. But there's no baby. I mean, like, <laughs> little baby. There's no baby. They emerge fully formed as, as a grown male and female Buddhas. But they come through the central channel and into the womb, and then they, they emanate out from the womb of the mother. So in the so center should be Kala Chakra, born, right? With but they're Vishwamata. not babies. What? In the center, he's asking, it's Kala Chakra and Vishwamata. The what? In the center of the whole ordeal is our Vishwamata and Kala Chakra. It's not an ordeal, it's a bliss flow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're the, they're the center of the... You, you, they're not they, they're you. You're meditating this as yourself. And you're shaping everyone, and you're creating the environment, and you're turning all beings into this, into this liberated form, you know, non-dual liberated form, without, without them falling down to either the extreme of only complete obsession with the samsara, or extreme obsession with being out of samsara and nirvana. You're simultaneously in both, uh, and you're visualizing that. But there's no babies. But they are all your babies in another way. But they they jump out full born, so you don't have to nurse them. That's the lucky part. <laughs> so it's like that. I don't know if that's getting to what you're you're interested, in, but that's that's the, that's what it is. Okay. And uh, another question. Any other questions? No. Okay. So then now it's the action triumph. So that finishes this, what's called service, but they have different ways of dividing the, the meditation. And uh, they call it mandala. It's the end of the mandala triumph segment. Now here you melt into clear light yourself at the beginning of this action triumph. It says arousal, but actually first there's the dissolution. On my brow, let's read it, let's read it together. On my brow... The body Vajra Om, on the throat the speech Vajra Ah, at the heart the mind Vajra Hum, and Ho, in, which is the intuition Vajra in the Avaduti at the crown and at the navel. So here both, there's Ho's at crown and navel, there's not Hamsha, just Ho's at crown and navel. The light rays of the wisdom of great passion flare from the navel Ho with the fire of Chanda or Chandali. And Chanda is the goddess of the, the flame at the center of the pelvic floor. <laughs> Chanda. She's associated with a low caste, uh, passionate woman. And myself as the Lord Vajrin, together with my consorts on the lotus center and petal. So, the, you know, you with your Vishwamata, but also with the, all the eight Shaktis. You melt into a moon-like drop, completely just melt into a drop of, like a moon of spirit of enlightenment, abiding in that form as the actuality of great bliss. So you just melt into a drop. You disappear from being an ordinary bunch of, uh, with arms and legs and all this stuff. You just become a drop. And thereupon the four goddesses, Buddha goddesses they are, Buddhesses I like to call them sometimes, who are the actuality of the four immeasurables, 
and also of the four elements. You know, Lochana is the earth, and um, she's the love immeasurable. Mamaki is water, and she's the compassion immeasurable. Pandaravazini is fire, and she's the joy measurable. And Tara, Samaya Tara, is the wind element, and she is uh, the equanimity immeasurable. But anyway, these four Buddhas, who are the four elements and the four immeasurables, they, they don't like you disappearing and just loafing around as a drop of bliss. They like, they're a little bit bored by that. So they sing you a song. And first, Lotana says, I, Lotana, mother of beings, am the yogi's harmonious cause. I, you read it together, yeah, with mandala nature, arouse the kala chakra, fulfill my desire. Then I, Mamaki, am the sister, the yogi's evolutionary cause. I, with my mandala nature, arouse the kala chakra, fulfill my desire. Then the third one, Fire one. I, Pandaravasini, which means one who wears red. So always dressed in red. And the daughter, the yogi's very person. With my mandala nature, I arouse thee, Kala Chakra, fulfill my desire. I, Tara, am the granddaughter, abiding immaculateness of the yogi. With my mandala nature, I arouse thee, Kala Chakra, fulfill my desire. Thus, they arouse me individually, and then in union, they sing, and this is all sung. You imagine that this, you're being sung to. O Savior, and you and Bhajat Mishwamata, are, by the way, are both in this lump of, uh, of uh, this drop of bliss, of, of uh, white bodhicitta, white enlightenment spirit, bliss, great bliss. And they say, O Savior, please, having experienced the mandala of the void, with your resolve to deliver living beings, emanate the mandalas of body, speech, and mind. Then I myself, as the Lord Vajri, become aroused by these songs, and seeing all the three realms as like a hallucination, transformed from the melted moon drop into a blue home, radiating stainless rays of light, I again transformed into a Vajra-created glorious Kala Chakra, radiating the five taintless light rays. Prem, and then there's some more stuff in there which, about the shaktis and things, but I left that out. Prem and Chopper create the golden Vishwamata, who embraces me as Lord from the front. Four faces, front yellow, white, right white, black blue, left red. Each three-eyed, eight hands, right holding Chopper, gold, sounding Damaru and rosary, left holding Kapala, noose, hundred petal, Pundarika, lo white lotus, jewel and jewel, adorned by five seals, united with the Lord, left leg extended. So then, you're there again with the shaktis around you, and the mother in your thing, you're not really thinking so much about the mind mandala even, it's just you, and now you emanate the mandala again. So the sound of ecstasy, from the union of I myself, Lord, Father, Mother, invites all the emanated deities from the Lord Buddhas and Lady Buddhas of the nature of the five mandalas up to the Ichas and the Bahichas. And the Ichas and the Bahichas are some kind of you know, ecstasy goddesses who are sprinkled around, quite a number of them, with weird names, in the, between the speech, mind, speech, and body mandalas. The Ichas are, Icha literally means uh, desire, so the desires and the outer desires, and they're the ones out on the body mandala. They stand in space above me. Those are therefore the most external of the deities, of the 722 deities. Uh, they stand in space above me, and with their nature of aggregates, elements, and media, etc., they enter through the crown for the sake of the devotee mandala. They melt into spirits of enlightenment, or nowadays I would say votary mandala. That's the one I'm visualizing is the votary mandala. They melt into spirits of enlightenment, the red and white ones, by the fire of great passion, and course through the central channel, the avaduti, falling into the womb of the mother from the father's, where well, the white one falls into the womb of the mother from the father's vajra channel, the red one falls into the womb of the mother from the mother's vajra channel, as, it, as drops. Each part of the drop transforms into the individual deities under the lordship of Akshobhya, 
first as seed syllables, then as hand syllables, then as full-blown deity bodies. One by one, they emanate from the lotus of the mother and stay each on his or her own station. Some sitting, some standing. I shouldn't have said stand. Oh, and Vajra create the green ekshobhya, etc. Then, when you recite this, and when His Holiness does it every morning in the self-initiation, or when the monks do it, when they do it, they again recite the entire thing of body, speech, and mind mandala. Again, in this place. They, they recite all of it, all 722. Well, 712, that's the, you and the 10 shaktis. Uh, you and the shaktis are 10 more, so that makes 722. But these are all that are non you and the shaktis. Then you do this thing where the experiential unification with the intuitive hero, you, know, you have the devotee or votary hero, even of the mandala and of the deities in the mandala. That means by your devotion, your vow, your commitment, you have created this visualization. Then you have, go through this process of you send out your Vajra Vega, created from my heart, home in a Vajra. Vajra Vega, so the Vajra Vega expresses the Vajra force, your will as the Vajra force, which is irresistible even by a Buddha. Vajra Vega, nobody does, doesn't do what Vajra Vega wants somehow. He's so, such a force. So a Vajra Vega emanates on my exhalation, on blue light rays. Terrific body, grinding face, grinning face, gnashing fangs, sounding fierce sound, 12 eyed, 26 arms, 4 faces, 2 footed, emerged from wisdom and art, I would say nowadays, holding weapons like the Lord oneself, holding up with the two extra hands, two yellow hands, the bloody elephant hide robe adorned by five seals, crowned by akshobhya. Crowned by akshobhya means that there's a little tiny live akshobhya on his crown, because they don't mind duplicating their bodies any amount of time. Wearing skull and fresh head garlands, adorned by snake ornaments, standing on an eight-legged lion chariot. The, the chariot of eight, eight, there's a bunch of eight-legged lions pulling the chariot. The chariot doesn't have eight legs. I should put a dash there. He presses on the wisdom hero lord of the invited deities of the mandala. Actually, it should be intuition hero lord of the invited deities of the mandala, similar to those visualized. Jabbing the navel of the Kala Chakra in the intuition hero. So the intuition, this intuition hero means the duplicate of the Ur Kala Chakra, wherever it is. You know, there's like the original Kala Chakra. So he's invited from the original Kala Chakra universe to, to make a duplicate, to come and inhabit the one you visualize. So the real Kala Chakra emanates this is what they call an intuition hero, uh, lord, of the invited deities in the mandala, similar to those visualized. So the Vajravega drags them all from wherever they are in their duplicate, and they all become what you visualize. So therefore, what you visualize becomes the real thing, so to speak. He binds that lord's 24 hands with his serpent nooses. He threatens him with the rest of his weapons and draws him into the sky before me. Then Vajravega dissolves back into my heart. So then you make a big offering sequence to the invited intuition hero uh, mandala with all its deities of Kala Chakra, which is the, the intuition duplicate. And you go to the cha 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 nya vajra gande gandarchanam kuru kuru swaha, and then you put mali du paper deep. I'm going to fix that up for you a little bit more later. And um, you can do that if you want, or you just do it where you, re, you, you just do that one sentence, and you go, Mali Dubi Pradipa Amate Akstelasi Hasapadi Nitti Giti Kame, and then you close with Sarva Buddha Bodhisattva Akrodadin Vajrasurta Pujam Kuru Kuru Swaha. And then you make these five things. You're holding the Vajra and bell. You may ring a bell when you make the offering. Then you hold the Vajra and bell, and then you go, Vajra Bhairava Akashaya Ja. So you say, the Vajra terrifier summons everyone here. And then you go like that. And then you go, Pradnantaka hum. And then you touch this little finger and that big finger. Then you put Yamantaka bam, and you put them together like that. And then you could Padmantaka ho and Vignantaka he. So you, you merge them all together. So then it becomes the real thing. And then...
So this just repeats that they all merge. And uh, then, and this you wouldn't do normally. What time is it? Should we take a look? It's almost, I think we'll stop here. I'm going to stop here. Can you just run through the mudras very quickly for us? This one, this one, holding Valdren Bell. This one, this one. Really four. Oh, no, you just touch your index finger and your little finger, index finger and little finger, four fingers touching together, crossing them together like that, and holding that for the two, two mantras. OK? I think we're going to stop 8.45. Dana told me not to do it too late. And there, it would be long if we started on the initiation mantras, which we will do tomorrow around 10 o'clock. Like this. Like this. You're holding Vajran Bell. Like this, 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 this. Basically, that's it. OK? to run over. That's a long, long, long day. You all are heroic. We had a great time. I want to thank the um, eight people from the study group that tuned in on the live stream. Hello, everybody. Laura and a couple other people. Um, we'll be sending, or I'll be sending an email in the morning with the link to tomorrow's live stream. Um, and please submit questions into the chat, and we'll forward it to um, the group. Uh, one quick nut and bolt is the um, the spa. We, our spa people were asking. Our spa is um, closed on Tuesdays, uh, so tomorrow is a Tuesday, <clears throat> and we're also going to do the extended afternoon class as scheduled. So uh, then at six at five fifteen tomorrow morning, Michelle's going.